Welcome to another episode of African Europe Inside by the Sunny Ofehe Show. In this episode, we look at the next presidential election with special focus on President Goodluck Jonathan. In this episode, we take a look at the chances of the incumbent president, Goodluck Jonathan, a native of the oil-rich Niger Delta region of Nigeria and a member of the ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP. I am Goodluck Jonathan. I am Goodluck Jonathan. I am Goodluck Jonathan. I am Goodluck Jonathan. I'm good luck. I'm good luck, Jonathan. I was not born rich. I wasn't born rich. I was not born rich. I was not born rich. Good luck. I am good luck, Jonathan. I am good luck, Jonathan. I had no shoes, no school no bags. School bags. I, I carried, carried my, my book in, in my hand. hand. No school bag. I'm good luck, Jonathan. I am good luck, Jonathan. I have no car to take me to school. Some days I have only one meal. I never imagined, never imagined I would be where I am today. If I could make it, if he can make it, you can make it. If he can make it, I can make it. If he can make it, I can make it. If he can make it, we can make it. I am. I am. Good luck, Jonathan. Good luck, Jonathan. And I will never, never let you down. We can make it. The Nigerian election has been set for March 28 after being postponed from February 14. The government of Nigeria cited security threat in the northeastern part of Nigeria as a reason for the postponement. Good luck, Ebele Azikiwe Jonathan has been president of Nigeria since 2010 after he took over from his predecessor, Alaji Umaru Yaradua, who died in office. Between 2007 and 2010, President Jonathan was the vice president of Nigeria. In 1999, President Jonathan was sworn in as the deputy governor of Bayelsa State alongside Dimipri Alama Sega until 2005 when he became the governor of Bayesa State upon the impeachment of Governor Dipri Alamasega by the Bayesa State House of Assembly. In accordance with the order of succession in the Nigerian constitution, following the death of President Umaru Yaradwa, President Gulag Jonathan was sworn in as Nigerian 14th head of state. He cited anti-corruption, power, and electoral reform as focuses of his administration. He also stated that he came to office under very sad and unusual circumstance. In 2010, Jonathan launched his Roadmap for Power Sector Reform. Its primary goal was to achieve stable electricity supply in Nigeria. The power sector has been plagued with blackouts and billions of dollars spent on importing diesel for generators. In a study conducted by the World Bank, lack of access to finance and electricity were cited as Nigerian main hurdle to development. Jonathan's administration has been overseeing the privatization of the country's power sector. In 2011, the president launched the youth enterprise with innovation in Nigeria, YOW. I, an initiative which he stated will be an innovative business plan competition that harnesses the creative energies of young people between the ages of 18 and 35. The initiative created sustainable jobs for youths. We had some other programs that we were running. We had what we call the You Win program, where we give uh, grants, not loans, to young entrepreneurs. You write a proposal, kind of a business plan. A neutral body will assess, and if they feel that your business plan will go through, we give you a grant based on the assessment, ranging from 1 million naira to 10 million naira. Almost 80% of them are doing well, and each of them employ one or two others. Some employ up to 20 additional uh, young people. So through that process, we are creating a lot of jobs. Yeah, my name is uh, Engineer George Omo Iduho. I've been here in Italy for the past 27 years. Wow. And we are all politicians here. Okay. So anything good is good. So that's why we are all here to support our president. It's like a solidarity movement for our president. As we all know, on the 28th of this month, there's, there's an election, presidential election in Nigeria. One of the good things we can do for our good president, Jonathan, good luck, Jonathan, is to mobilize ourselves here and make sure we call our people down home to vote for Jonathan. 
Also in 2011, President Jonathan launched the Transformation Agenda. The Transformation Agenda is based on a summary of how the federal government hopes to deliver project programs and key priority policies from 2011 to 2015, coordinated by the National Planning Commission. Our president has been doing a lot of booting. So who don't know should know that the transformation agenda is on and we, we, are, we are praying that our people should vote for him. And we are also using this medium to ask our president to give us the voting right, the diaspora voting right, so that we can vote our choice. Uh, that issue is a constitutional issue and I'm happy that it featured in the last national conference. I do believe very soon all diasporans, including myself, will be able to vote. You see, the fact is, it's a very clear thing. If it is the only, if it is the road alone that I have seen, because the last time I went to Nigeria, I was able to apply Bini Lagos in less than three and a half hours, which has never happened before. And the other time he said he's going to also give us light. And in the Edo state where I'm from, we have seen a lot of projects going on about the light so we are so hopeful that he will always bring us up from i mean from where we are now good luck e jonathan of pdp having certified the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected the viewers already know that when it comes to the issue of power electricity he has done so many things when you go like in nigeria in some communities today there, there, there are always constant un, uninterrupted light for like 14 to 16 hours in some areas in nigeria today so automatically when i traveled back to nigeria last year honestly i was impressed as you can see i wear it i write it it's all over me if you read what is written here, if you understand it early, it is only good luck Jonathan and his vice that we're going to vote in. So all the all the Nigerians in Italy who love good things, who love transpiration and information. Our president, I know definitely he's going to get the message across that today we remember him. It's not we remember him every day, but today is a special day that we want to show him that we come with, considerate, uh, with uh, 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 solidarities. People from different parts of Italy are here today to tell him that we support him. So for the fact that we support him, even though we are not there to vote him in, but our maximum support, our prayers, is going to work for him. So even as he's elected the second time, he should also remember Nigerians, he should also let the people, the Nigerians who are outside the country to be recognized wherever they are, you know. Most especially, we need voters' cards in our various communities where we live in Europe, where we can vote our, our candidates, our choosed candidates, yes. There is no vacancy in Asura, Jonathan again. There is no vacancy in Asura. Vote for Jonathan again. There is no vacancy in Asura. Vote for Jonathan again. His Excellency, sir, on behalf of the Nigerian women residents in Rome, we present this petition to His Excellency. My fellow Nigerians, on behalf of the Christian Association of Nigeria, we are glad to have a president who cares for equality of religion. No matter the kind of religion the person is coming from, we bless God for the person of good luck, Jonathan. And we want to remind him that God the grace of God that is upon him will keep on being upon him in Jesus' name. Yeah. And that even in the 
book of 2 Samuel chapter 8 verse 6, as God preserved David, so God will preserve him, his family and the administration and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yeah. That no power of hell can distract the attention of good of uh, peace-seeking Nigerians. The power of Boko Haram cannot divide Nigeria. We are in support of you, good Lord, Jonathan. We say, may your death be long. And we thank you, your administration, equally in your awesome achievements. You have added another international airport to the city, to a very big city in Nigeria, in the place of Enugu. We say, may your days be long. Yeah. We thank you for your achievement in the oil sector. Even at the falling of the oil, you are able to keep on carrying Nigeria up. We say, we bless, your, we bless God for your name. Yeah. We thank you equally for our youth that you have been providing employment with. We thank you equally that those money hungers who have sold you because grace of God is upon you. We remind you that even in the, in, in the person of Jesus Christ, he was sold because of grace of God upon him. Yes. We say, carry gold. Good luck, Jonathan. Yes. The Christian Asso Association of Nigeria are praying for peace of Nigeria. And we are assuring you that nothing will ever distract you. Be focused and call unto God when the trouble arises. Because definitely there will be trouble as long as we are alive. But in all those troubles, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. May your days be long. Amen. Thank you, fellow Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you. And not only our president, but in the person of the whole nation. Mr. Ambassador Sir, we say, may God keep on keeping you the way you have been, carrying us together and binding us with, your, with the peace of love in this country. God bless you. God bless the entire South of Nigerian community in Italy. The government followed the advice of international experts that claimed that the fuel subsidy was not sustainable. It costs Nigeria $8 billion yearly, or 25% of the government annual budget. But majority of Nigerians objected to it, leading up to civil protests. Clearly, people are angry, people are unhappy, and that is what you are seeing. It has never been like this in Nigeria, not under any situation. So clearly, the people are united because there is only one thing binding them together, the capacity to live, and that has been taken away from them by this policy. Espat believe that the subsidy removal will be of economic benefit to the Nigerian economy and save money for other sectors like education and infrastructural provisions. That it will also stem the corruption among the marketers being controlled by a cartel. Uh, in terms of negative media, of course, you journalists always believe that negative stories sell, and positive stories don't sell. And that is why there's this push for negative uh, information. Also, in the political setting, there's always the tendency for the opposition party to always want to bring government down. So that is also one of the reasons why you see a lot of uh, negative media. But we're quite pleased that uh, even though we have challenges, we're managing the country in a way that we're moving forward in uh, so many fronts. We've noticed where we want to. Of course, no country has reached where they want to, to be, but we are making significant uh, progress. In terms of the economy, of course, the last rebasing placed us at 510, uh, 510 uh, billion dollars, as a little above half a trillion dollars. That's significant. And uh, being, uh, that shows that uh, Nigeria has the largest economy. But we're not too satisfied with just having the largest economy. What interests me is not the size of the economy per se. It's significant because that will attract foreign direct investment. But how will my ordinary Nigerians feel? Do they have jobs? Do they have food to eat? Do they go to decent schools? go to hospitals when they are sick and they are cured. Those are the elements that interest me more. But we are quite pleased with the economy, because with that size of economy, we, the global players are interested in coming to Nigeria. And through that process, we will create jobs for our young men and women. The greatest challenge to President Goodluck Jonathan's administration is in the area of security posed by Boko Haram since 2005 in the northeastern part of Nigeria.
This has led to the killing of more than 5,000 people, including elderly and children. More than 2 million people displaced, leading to refugee crisis, with many crossing over to neighboring Cameroon, Niger, and Chad. The West has refused to support the Nigerian military with arms and even blacklisted Nigeria from purchasing arms to fight this terrorist group with links to Al-Qaeda and just recently ISIS. The West is claiming that the Nigerian military is using arms to carry out extrajudicial killings. However, in the last month, Nigerian army has made daring incursions into areas controlled by Boko Haram and have retaken many communities including Baga thanks to military support from Russia, Belarus, and Israel. The multinational cooperation consisting of Cameroon, Niger, and Chad have helped in the retreat of Boko Haram. President Goodluck Jonathan in the eyes of many have done well and therefore deserves a second term in office to consolidate his policies. Nigerians in diaspora have been organizing peaceful demonstrations in the US, UK, Netherlands, and just recently in Italy. At the Good Luck Jonathan support rally in Rome, organized by the group called Nigerians in Italy for Good Luck Jonathan, many Nigerians spoke on why they think Jonathan should be given a second chance. Receiving the group at the Nigerian embassy in Rome, the Nigerian ambassador to the Republic of Italy, Ambassador Eric Awarabi, thanked the Nigerians for expressing their wishes in a peaceful manner while assuring them that their messages will be conveyed to Mr. President. He called on Nigerians to be law-abiding during the elections. The ambassador has this to say. Nigeria in Rome. We welcome you to the embassy. On behalf of the of his excellency, on behalf of his excellency, Ambassador Tony Awarabi, uh, I want to present him to you to give response to all your positive agitations. You are welcome. Great Nigeria! Great! Great Nigeria! Great! Great Nigeria! Great! You have made me proud today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you cannot be in Nigeria to vote, but you'll be able to say your mind. Because you know the country belongs to all of us. Wherever you are, you will remember that one day you will get there. So for all of you to come together like this, I'm highly, highly impressed. There is a future for a great country. What you are doing, cut across party line. Somebody says it's not just PDP, but Nigerians in the diaspora. Because there is nobody called PDP. But there is a country called Nigeria. Nigeria. It's like if you build a house, you can give it a name. After two years, you can change that name. But the house remains. That country will remain for us and for your children. I want to thank all of you, the women in Italy, Jerry Franklin Cultural and Green Team Organization. They had a The can that we are here. The two Italians that have won. <laughs> they have identified yeah. with our country. Yeah. We, we appreciate it so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. For us, it's a pleasure. <laughs> and then the Nigerians in the diaspora, you are great, and I must take it as a point of duty to forward your letters to Mr. President. Let him know.
Hallelujah. That there are people wishing him well and wishing the country well. There are people who may not be able to vote that they are praying for him here. Yes. So on behalf of this embassy, we want to thank you for the peaceful demonstration you have showed today. And I assure you that when you cry to God, God will hear you. And what you want, God will give you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wonderful interaction with the Nigerian community in Italy. Uh, they know a difference between their left hand and their right hand. Uh, for them to see what is say, said today means that uh, uh, Jonathan has been doing a fantastic job for the past four years. And uh, who stops a winning team from going back to play? And that is what they did, and I'm really, really pleased that they did that. As far as I know, Nigeria is greater than anybody. No single Nigerian should take precedence over the interests of the country. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that both leaders have signed an accord mm -hmm. of non-violence, and we expect that those elections should be held in a very fair and conducive atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Let people express what they want, and then everybody should be able to accept the results as they can. It's very important that the international community should know what Nigeria stands for. We know that Nigeria is part and parcel of the international community. Mm -hmm. And it's important that the rest of the world should be highly interested in what happens there. What we pray for is a free and fair election. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we want the international community is to have that in mind and uh, send observers to see how it looks like. Okay. Nigeria has been there. We have enjoyed 15 years mm -hmm. uninterrupted democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, this election should not be a different one. Exactly. We have done it before, and we'll do it again. Uh, there are several concerns around it. Uh, some organizations are concerned with the election from a technical side, how the election is being planned for and administered by the Electoral Commission. But of course, given the focus of crisis group work, we are concerned about preventing, if it was possible, otherwise limiting violence around the elections. This is a very important election. It could actually be said to be a watershed election for Nigeria. I mean, it, things could turn for the better and things could turn for the worse. It's particularly a different election because for the first time, it's an election basically between two political parties because last year, four opposition parties, the four major opposition parties, merged together and now stand as one party facing the, the People's Democratic Party, which has been the dominant party and the ruling party for the last 15 years. So you have an election that is probably going to be more you know, uh, seriously contested between the two parties than in the past when you had one major party that always looked like it was going to win. You could have a real contest this time. We organize uh, this event because uh, this is a, a very important moment for Nigeria. The new election with a very good people, that is Jonathan. Jonathan is the future of Nigeria and we hope that uh, in, the, in the next future he can, he can take for Nigeria the, the better. Uh, we ask the authorization from, uh, from the government of Rome to organize this event and the government uh, of Rome consider this a great event, so sent to us more police and uh, the situation was very good, was very calm. My message is uh, believe in yourself for a very good future in Africa and in the world. We are one, just by the color and uh, we don't mind the color but we, we work with one mind because Jonathan is a honest man and he has future for us and uh, today I can say Nigeria is uh, moving forward very fast, it's growing and they even um, for the Italians they want to come to Nigeria to do business with us they want to stay in Nigeria because it's comfortable and it's peaceful so I am very happy to see them in our means and even campaigning with us I think it's a pleasure for me.
you. March 28, 2015, as Nigerians go to the poll to elect their next president, the question is, should President Goodluck Jonathan be re-elected for another four years? We call on all Nigerians to be law-abiding, no matter the political party differences. Like the Nigerian ambassador to Italy said, the political parties may come and go, but Nigeria will always remain Nigeria. Once again, thank you for tuning in to African Europe Inside by the Sunny Affair Show. See you again next week. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. God bless you all for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. For extra scenes from this interview, visit our website, www.sunnyoffairshow.com. For inquiries and sponsorship, see our contact details on your screen. Thank you once again, and God bless you all. See you next week.